of week 10. Okay, let's dive straight into the reminder. If you guys remember, I share with you the course textbook on Moodle. That image. Okay. You guys notice that all this time we have been working on the controllers, the models, the views, all those three main components of your system. But there's a smaller fourth component that seems to be almost like out of the picture, out of the MVC pattern implementation, because it does not execute at the same time as the MVC pattern components. And I'm referring to the spring scheduler right here. That oval component and it's an oval because it's different from the rest of the components, will execute triggered by time and date, by a timestamp. Okay? Now, it's going to make sure that it plays, that it's a team player. What does that mean? Well, it's going to make sure that it uses spring. It doesn't necessarily use the, con the model view controller um, pattern, but it will use Spring to collaborate with the rest of the project in order to be able to send emails for reminders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's basically what it's going to do. It's going to be a Spring component where you declare jobs and those jobs will have specific tasks to run and you will just schedule them and you will schedule them at a particular time and day and when that particular time and day reaches it, they will just execute it will be a job that will create several tasks and that's what we're going to have to end up doing so the implementation of something like this should be very very simple the configuration shared with the, us by the author. So now we're into the spring job scheduling section of our XML. Okay? And then we're going to have to create a being called a scheduler factory. Okay. So I'm going to lay I'm laying out to you all the different beans that we're going to get that we're going to require in order to implement this functionality. We have added to our configuration, our spring configuration, we have added two sections. The spring mail support section and the spring job scheduling. And see it as two different components even though it's it's really one component in here. Okay? See it as two components in the sense that we're going to be doing two things. We're going to be doing a job scheduling in spring and the jobs that we want to schedule for execution they just happen to be emails does it have to be just emails no in fact you can schedule any jobs you can schedule any maintenance jobs if you need to okay you can create your own spring bean and schedule it for execution at some given point in time and that being all it does, it creates some execution or, or it creates some maintenance on the database or whatever you want to call you know, whatever you want to do, depends on the system. But in this case, the jobs that we're scheduling, they just happen to be emails. 
So that's why we're going to need a second section called the spring mail support. Okay? All right. So, in order to send an email, what do we need? We need a class from the Spring Framework called the Java Mail Sender Implementation. Very well. That's it. It's all provided for you. So if you want to read about it, here it is. Allows for defining all settings locally as being properties. Alternative uh, Java Mail can be specified, possibly pulled from an application server, all that stuff. This is this mail server. server I'm sorry. This mail sender will communicate with your mail server. And you can declare all kinds of properties, very similar to what we did with the MySQL Hibernate, where you will say this is the name of the server, this is how you, or the username that you will use, this is the password that you will use to connect to it, etc., etc. You will provide all the requirements in here for the mail server. Host is Nova. Okay. Now, we're going to have to create another one called the e employee reminder message. Somehow, we're going to have to send an email to an employee, right? And that email has to be an email message. What do you need to create an email, Lance? Exactly. You need all those different components that an email has, message has. Like, who is it from? What's the subject? What's the body of the text message? Okay? And right here in this XML spring configuration, you're defining those things. Is that all you need for an email message? No. I can tell you right away, right here, I'm, what am I missing? I'm missing the twos, for instance. Who am I going to send it to? Well, depends. If Lance forgot to submit his timesheet on a Friday before 2 o'clock, he will be one of the twos. But if he did it at 12 o'clock, he's not going to be one of the twos. So the two is going to be constructed by some class. Right? So all what we're going to define as the employee reminder message is going to be a class that will take care. It's called the simple mail message class. It's a spring framework class. Okay? And we're going to populate a few thingies there that we know are going to be constant the from who is it from the subject and typically in the from you will put some kind of support or help support or technical support email address not somebody like here right the subject what's going to be the subject of the email hey this is a reminder submit your timesheet and then the bo the body everybody will get the same exact same body email what's going to be the body please don't forget to submit your timesheet thank you you can have that customized as well. Yes. In this case, everybody that will get a reminder will get the same body. Okay? Doesn't have to. In fact, these, remember, these are properties that get injected into the simple mail message. Does that mean that we cannot modify them? Yes, we can. Does that mean that we cannot inject any more? Yeah, we can inject more if you wanted to, or less. Okay? All right. So as long as we are clear with that, that's the next thing that we're going to need. What's the next thing that we're going to need? We're going to need an actual reminder email being, okay? And we're going to have to provide that class. That's not provided by the Spring Framework for us, okay? That's going to be the actual being that will create the email reminder, okay? So what is it going to use? Well, it's going to use the Employee Manager. Do you guys have any idea why it will need the Employee Manager? 
Why do you think the reminder email will need the employee manager for? To to get the emails from the employees, right? In fact, the employee manager is going to give me all the employees information, including the email. What about the mail sender? Definitely. For me to create an email reminding employees, I'm going to need the help of the mail sender. That's the guy that is going to allow me to send my email. So you're going to inject this mail sender. You're going to inject it in here. What about the message? Well, you bet. Of course the message. You are going to need... you are going to need to provide some kind of template message. And here it is. We have created an employee reminder message okay, that has a from, a subject, and a body. So we're going to inject that employee reminder message into the reminder email. But another important thing. I'm going to have to inject the timesheet manager. Lance, can you tell me why on earth am I going to inject the timesheet manager on the reminder email? Because you have to determine what timesheets have been submitted as of Friday 2 p.m. Right? Who's going to tell you that? the timesheet manager. So the timesheet manager, you have to think about the functionality. You say, wait a minute, that means that I'm somehow I'm going to have to create a, a method in the timesheet manager that when I call it, it will give me it will give me the the timesheets that have been submitted by two o'clock Friday. And remember for every timesheet that you pull, you guys remember the relationship? For every timesheet that you pull, there is an associated employee to it. Remember? That was the many to one relationship that we created in the Hibernate mappings. So when you pull a timesheet, you know who is the employee that submitted the timesheet. Okay? So if that guy submitted already a timesheet for Friday before 2 o'clock, guess what? We're not going to have to submit an email for that guy. But only the timesheet manager can help me with that. So now you're understanding how the functional requirements are implemented from the configuration. Notice that I have not touched one piece of code. Have I touched a piece of code? Not at all. I am brainstorming this functional requirement from the configuration. I'm saying I need to create a reminder email. I have to provide that class. I know that. I know I'm going to have to provide this class. I know that. But this guy who is going to create the email is going to need the help of the employee manager, is going to create the help of the timesheet manager, is going to need the help of the mail sender, is going to help the is going to need some kind of employee reminder message. Okay? So you are working on the links, on the inner workings of the system without providing any code whatsoever. Now, that's as far as far as the email sending piece. Now let's take a look at the job scheduling piece. Okay? The job scheduling piece is going to be a mix of a framework that it's external to ex to Spring. And it's called the Quartz framework. Anybody heard of that? That's what it's going to check our 2 o'clock Friday. Yes, very good. All right. Let's, let's Google Quartz for a second, Chester. Quartz, if I can spell. Quartz. Yeah, it's not the mineral. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, quartz scheduler. Okay, quartz scheduler supports Java Standard Edition and Java Enterprise Edition. This is actually in this guide. This framework has grown a lot since since the code, since the jar that was provided by us, by the author. Okay. So it has evolved, I should say. It has evolved a lot. It's into 2.13 release. Boy, I don't think we're even using 1.0 version. Let's take a look at... You guys want to see what version we're using? Go into your library. Timex Web. JavaScript Resources. Go into the web content. No. Java Resources Libraries. Java Resources Libraries. And take a look at the course. Course is 1.5.1. .1. That's the jar that we're using in our Timex. Now they are into 2.13. Okay? Still open source. Good thing. Okay? So that's the guy that it's going to allow us to schedule jobs and it's going to create it's going to trigger I'm sorry it's going to trigger a job based on something called the cron trigger and the, this is the format of the cron trigger. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to provide the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the days of the month, the month, the day of the week optionally, and the year in which you want that job to trigger. Okay? And you're going to provide that in a string, a comma delimited value string with those two, four, six, seven parameters. Okay? They're all mandatory except for the year. If you don't specify the year, it defaults to current year. The seconds, what are the allowed values? 0 to 59. Minutes, 0 to 59. Hours, 0 to 23. Days of the month, 1 to 31. Month, you can specify it in numeric or in three letter um, equivalents. Days of the week, same thing. You can specify one through seven numeric or three letters of the day. And then a four digit year. Okay? And there are special characters. So you have dash for ranges, you have star for everything, you have slash, and I can't remember slash what it's for. You have question mark for a placeholder. Uh, these are star means all values. Question mark no specific value. Dash space uh, ranges. Uh, comma to specify additional values like Monday, comma Wednesday, comma Friday. So basically, the idea is with a seven comma delimited value string be able to provide a specific periodicity in which you can schedule something. Got it? And I'm not, ex I'm not expecting you guys to get become experts on that. You just have to read it and, be and come up with the scheduling system that you need for your specific email reminder or whatever you're trying to do uh, very easily. So, going back to our project, the Spring Job Scheduling. You need three pieces, three pieces to be able to schedule something. You need the scheduler. Who is the scheduler? The scheduler says, oh, I'm the guy in charge. I have this list of stuff to do. And I see when to do it. Is it time? No. Then it goes through the list. Is it time? No. Then it goes through the list. That's the scheduler. Okay? That's the guy in charge. Then there's another piece that is the actual job. Okay? 
the actual job. And the actual job, it's what you want to execute when it's time to execute it. What's going to be the job in this case, Lance? Can you tell me? Exactly. Our reminder email. So somehow we're going to have to inject into this job our reminder email. And there's the third piece, which is the job trigger. Remember, there's the job, what's going to run. There's the job trigger, when it's going to run. And there's the scheduler, the guy in charge. Right? Those are the three beans that we're going to have to inject in our system in order to create a scheduler. Let's take a look at each one of them one by one. Here is the scheduler. See that? The scheduler has a list of the scheduler has a list of jobs triggers. See that? The scheduler has a list of job triggers. So in this case, the property is called triggers and it's a list and we only have one in the list. What is it called? The reminder employee email job trigger. So we're going to have to create that bean. And here is that bean. What is that bean? That's bean that is going to be implemented out of a Spring Framework class. We don't really care. You know, it's going to be part of the Spring Framework class that works with Quartz. And it's going to be called Cron Trigger Bean. What does the Cron Trigger Bean need? Basically two things. The job detail and when it's going to be triggered. So let's figure this one out. When is it going to be triggered? Zero means zero seconds. Zero minutes. Fourteen means military time. Two p.m. Correct? So at two p.m., does it matter what day of the month? Question mark. What is question mark? Question mark is no specific value. So day of the month, no specific value. Any day. In fact, that means what? Any day, right? Then the next parameter. What's the next parameter? Am I reading this correctly? Yeah. The month, is that what the next parameter is? All months. So it doesn't matter the day, all months. No, I'm sorry. I mean, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm missing the year, right? Because the year is optional. So I'm reading this incorrectly. The question mark is on the fourth value. The fourth value is the day of the month. So I don't care the day of the month. On all months. And then what about the day of the week? The sixth day of the week, whatever that is, right? So we, we start with Sunday. It's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, six. So Friday is six. No. B, any year. You got it? So that's the cron expression property that will get injected into the cron trigger bean so that it knows when to execute our email job trigger. Now, the actual job detail is a property, and we're going to have to specify exactly what job email is going to be, or what job is going to be executed at 2 p.m. on Friday. And here is the bean. The rem it's called the Reminder Employee Email Job Detail, and it's going to be another Spring Framework class going to be the method invoking job detail factory bean, okay? And basically you need two things to specify the job detail. You need the object and the method inside that object that you want to run. Fair enough? Right? What's going to be the object? Reminder email. Do you guys remember where we've seen reminder email? Here it is. 
Reminder is mail is that class that we need to implement where we need to inject all these guys that is going to help it. It's going to help it create an email. So the target object is going to be reminder email. It's a reference bean. What about the target method? The target method is going to be a method inside reminder email called send employee reminder mail. And just with configuration, we have laid out the entire functional requirement. Now let's implement it. You guys remember that reminder email job must have a send employee reminder mail method because that's the one that is going to get triggered. So I'm going to create a separate package. And this package is going to be called com.timexweb that dot job. Finish. And then I'm going to create in there, I'm going to create in there. Let's refresh it. Here it is. Com Timex Web Job. So I'm in the com in the configuration. Com commercial Timex Web Job. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at reminder email. Remember, reminder email, it's a class that we have to inject the employee manager, the mail sender, the employee reminder message, and the timesheet manager all into that class so that it can help it create the email. And here it is. So we create, we provide the private variables for employee manager, mail sender, and the message. Okay? which is a simple mail message. Let me see if that agrees with what it's been... Um, yeah, the employee reminder message, this guy, is a simple mail message. You guys see that? Employee reminder message is a simple mail message. So it's going to agree with the simple mail message here. Okay. And obviously, we're going to have to provide getters and setters so that all can get injected for the employee manager, the message, and the mail sender. That in the configuration anyway. Send mail. Look what it's going to do. It's going to go into the employee manager and tell it, hey, get me all the hourly employees. Let's see what that means. It means that it's going to go into the database, and it's going to look for an employee whose employee code is hourly, right? means H. And we're going to get it ordered by name. We're, it's going to be a whole list. Right? In this case, for us, Timex employee, the hourly employees are Mike Dover and Ajay Kumar. Okay? So it's going to give me all the hourly employees. And it's going to give it to me it's a list. Now, if the list is null or the size is less than than one, I'm just going to return. Nothing gets executed. Nothing gets sent. No email sent. All right. Something is wrong, obviously, but because rarely you will not have any hourly employees. Most of the employees should be hourly employees. And then, what do you do with this? The idea is to extract the email addresses out of each one of them. Okay? So you're going to create an array of strings. Okay? And the size for this array of strings is going to be the same size as the list. So at the most, 
you know we're going to get everybody's emails at most. And then we have this employee variable ready. And what do we do? From the list that we got from employee manager, we're going to cast each one of the members of the list into an employee, and then we're going to get the email from it. And we're going to save it into the email addresses. So basically, we got everybody's email addresses in an array. Notice what we're doing next. We're actually taking this simple mail message. Hold on a second. This simple mail message. This simple mail message. That's this guy. This simple, this simple mail message. Which, that's the one that we already have defined. The from, the subject, and the text. What are we doing with it? We are going to set the two. We're going to set the two. That's the part that we were missing, right, Lance? The two. Where are we going to send it to? And in fact, we're providing a whole array of email addresses as the two. And that is fine. There it is. Simple mail message. See that? So, the set to, look at this, you can provide a string, an array of strings, when you want to provide several email addresses, or just one string when you want to provide one address. Set to, okay? And then what do you do? You create a new simple mail message out of that message. And it's going to be what it's called a threat-safe mail message. You don't want any other threat to be touching that email component. Okay? And then what do you do with that threat-safe mail message? You're going to ask the mail sender, which is another bean that gets injected in here. You're going to ask the mail sender to send it. Now, this is the incorrect way of implementing reminder email. Can you tell me why, Lance? Why am I implementing this functional requirement incorrectly? <laughs> exactly. I'm sending emails to everybody. Whether you submitted a timesheet before 2 o'clock or not. That is weird. Is that what my functional requirement says? A weekly reminder email is sent to... No. A weekly reminder email will be sent out to employees who have not submitted their timesheets. Ah. The functional requirement says who have not but if you go to the user stories, what does this user story say? A reminder email will send every Friday at 2 p.m. to employees who have not submitted the timesheet yet. So at this point, and this is a mistake from the author, obviously, right? He gave us that implementation, but he is sending an email to absolutely all the hour employees, whether they submitted the timesheet or not. Now, if you, as an employee, submit your timesheet very nicely before 2 o'clock every Friday, would you like to be spammed with an email <laughs> reminding you about it? No! So, that's wrong. That implementation is wrong. And in fact, the implementation that I'm going to provide to you will do that. Okay? That's why we need the timesheet manager. Not only employee manager, we need the timesheet manager. Because the timesheet manager is going to tell me who did submit it, the timesheets. So that instead of triggering on a Friday, it's going to trigger on a Wednesday. That's a 4, right? And instead of triggering at 2 o'clock, I want it to trigger at 
9 o'clock, right? So that's 21, right? But it's already 901, so I'm going to have to do it at 21 and 4 minutes. Got it? So I'm aiming for 904. Right now it's 901. Okay? I'm going to. Hold on. What else do we need to do? You guys remember, I need to change something. The target method, right? It was just send email? Is that what it was? Anybody can tell me? Reminder email. Reminder email is send email, right? Send mail. Send mail. That. Okay? So now at this point, it's 9.05. <laughs> I missed the train. Give me two minutes, guys, please. Give me two, two minutes. So now, let's reschedule it for 9.05. Seven. Think it's gonna be enough time? Nine oh six. Better hurry up. Oh my god, clean. So I'm cleaning it. Now let's make it an eight. Yeah. I like it. We could have made it a nine oh seven probably. Yeah. All right, guys. Sorry, you have to wait one minute. Right, but but the, the scheduler is the one that is doing that. There it is. Did you guys see that? Yeah. I gotta find out what's here. Actually, what I should have done. What I should have done is I should have created a test case, sending an email, making sure that the whole process of sending an email is there, and then trigger it like this. Yeah, but I don't, we don't have time. Now. So what happened? Look at this. Just, just dissect very quickly what happened. Mail server connection failed. Okay, of course, because I didn't provide my password to my email address. Could not connect to SMTP host nova.edu port 25. Okay, so I have to I have to fix that, and I don't know I know how to fix that from the Windows. What you have to do is you have to declare your your mail server as Nova, and it will redirect it to it. I will show you later in the next week how to do that. But that's basically the connection refused, could not connect to it, so it could not connect to an SMTP host nova.edu. All right. Uh, so what's due for next week? Well, very simple. You guys have to produce ten user stories complete for the final project. Right? That's the final project. Right now, you have done timesheet list enter hours sign in and sign out that's three you're seven more to go this is week 10 you have six more weeks you do the math you have to do one user story per week and one of the weeks you have to kind of provide two okay where can any one of them you tell me which one okay so go ahead and implement either an enter hours or a timesheet list type. Or go ahead and implement a reminder email if you think that what, I've have, what I have given to you is enough. In fact, I'm going to provide this source code on Moodle for you guys to download and play with. Okay? Now, my version will have the only employees that have not submitted their timesheet before 2 o'clock version. Okay?